A new update for the Seastar S50 and S30 telescopes is finally out and among different bug fixes and small improvements, the main highlights are the possibility of shooting flat frames and also they have unlocked 60 second shots in the equatorial mode. So these are the main things that I will be focusing on today, but I still do want to mention one more thing and that is that now you can choose to turn off the LEDs while you're shooting and I think that is a really nice feature, especially if you're out under dark skies or especially in company at a star party. It is a beautiful day here in the Swiss Alps and it is also promising to be a clear night, mostly without the moon. So let's get into it. My name is Lutz and you're watching the Space Koala. ZWO announced the new S30 Pro at the Neve conference that is going to have a larger sensor. And so naturally one of my first questions was, are you going to come out with flat frames? Because the larger the sensor, the less you can get away without using flat frames and the answer was not so clear at the time they told me they were working on it but they didn't make it sound like it is coming anytime soon with the larger field of view and the larger sensor can we expect maybe flat calibration to come uh, we're not that uh, we're not there yet in terms of we're we're still testing sensors and setting okay. up setting up that um how far we go with an expert mode yet yeah, is still to be determined. Okay. So, so it is yeah. a possibility that it's Possible. not excluded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here we are a few weeks later and we already have it. Now you, you definitely need those flat frames to correct for vignetting, but it is not the only thing that they do. And I think that people underestimate how important flat frames are. If I could take just one type of calibration frame, it would be the flat frame because they do three very important things. And this is correcting for vignetting in your optical train. It is correcting for dust or any kind of dirt in front of your sensor or anywhere really. And the last thing that people tend to overlook is that even in these modern digital sensors, every single pixel has a slightly different responsiveness to light. And therefore you can have this kind of noise related to that. But if you have a flat frame, you can modulate the signal so you can get a perfectly even image. Flat frames are probably the most tricky ones to take amongst all calibration frames, but um, ZWO actually made it super easy with the C-Star. They walk you through how to do it step by step. So I will be demonstrating that today with both telescopes because they recommend that you either do sky flats or you use a tablet or any sort of artificial light source. So I will be doing the sky flats with one of them and the artificial light source, my phone screen with the other one and just show you how how easy it really is. Taking sky floods is really easy. All you're gonna need is a white piece of cloth, a white t-shirt. This is a pillowcase that I always keep in my car, but you could also use like a white sheet of printing paper. And then we're gonna place that on top of the telescope that just serves to make sure that you diffuse the light and you don't have absolutely anything that is in focus from the sky and let the sea star do its thing. Now for the sky flats, if the sun is still up as it is right now, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you point away from it so that you don't have any sky gradients in your flat from the sun. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So that looks about right. We go into the settings of the telescope, select advanced feature at the very bottom, and we select the option image calibration. And here you see that we have this new option that is flat shoot. If you just select shoot, it has the whole calibration guide. It tells you how to do it. Essentially, I will be covering the front of the telescope. Now, the only difficulty here is that while it does the auto flood, there is a limitation. So there should be a certain level of brightness that it is expecting. So if the sky is too bright, you may need to do more than just a single layer of white cloth. By the way, they also give you the joystick here so you can uh, also just rotate the telescope without having to go into one of the telescope control modes so you can select a good part of the sky. And so I select shoot and it does it and you can actually hear it like clicking and that is from it changing the filters because of course it needs to take separate flat frames for each of the filters. So in this case we have the regular like IR cut filter and then we have the light pollution filter filter so it takes a flat for each of them and I didn't even finish my sentence it was done this is how simple it is 
Let's do the other one with the other method that is using a tablet, an artificial light source, a flat panel, or I will just be using a phone. Let's do the second one. It will be the same exact thing with the exception that we're not using this guy, but we're using an artificial light source. I am connected. I go into advanced feature, image calibration, flat shoot. In this case, since they recommend that you use an iPad, you're going to use a tablet, you're going to use a phone, anything like that. If you're outside in the field, I highly recommend that you make sure that it is perfectly um, vertical so that you have a flat surface on top and then you don't end up breaking your phone or iPad in the process. So this is mostly horizontal. I will still put a piece of cloth in between, which you don't need, but I think it's less likely that it's gonna fall if I do that. And I literally will just open up Safari. You will go on Google if your start page is not white and you just zoom in so that it's all white. You really don't need to make it very complicated and you put it on top and I start the flat shoot. Here again, the only thing that can go wrong is that you have an incorrect level of brightness, either too low or too bright, that the C-Star is not able to compensate with the auto flat functionality. So you just kind of have to figure out if you need to lower or raise the brightness. Um, for me, it just worked the first time around. That's all there is to it. So now this has actually saved the master flats on the telescope. It's going to be using them automatically every time you do image enhancement or also if you're just shooting raw images. If you're wondering if you're going to get those flat files separately to be downloaded on your computer, the answer is going to be no, because remember, it's the same exact thing as what they do with the dark frames, for example. When the S50 first came out two years ago. At first they were giving you the dark frame separately and people were just so confused as to what to do with them. So they decided to just pre-calibrate the frames and just give you the calibrated frame. So this is the same exact thing here right now. It is completely transparent for the user. Essentially, you don't have to worry about it at all. If you do the flat frames and it says that it was successful, it's going to use the correct flat frames. If you shoot with the filter, it's going to apply the flat frame with the filter. If you shoot without the filter, obviously it's going to apply the one without the filter. There's nothing else to do at this stage. So the only other interesting thing worth mentioning, like I said, is the new 60 second equatorial shots. They work exactly the same way as when they enabled the 30 second ones. Um, you go into the settings of the C-Star and at the very top you can select 10, 20, 30, or 60. If you're going to want to do equatorial mode with 60 second shots, I highly recommend that you opt for one of these wedges. The important point is that you get the fine adjustment knobs because I just feel like that makes it infinitely easier to align precisely. The ones that I use are from Move Shoot Move, so I will link it below. One thing to keep in mind is that most of these wedges and tripod heads come with a quarter inch screw, whereas the bottom of the C-Star is a three eighths of an inch. Um, so you do need an adapter, which is very easy to find and costs literally nothing. I will link that also below because I think it's anyway useful to have. ZWO have announced their own tripod head, which is supposed to be a hydraulic one that has the arm to align it. I haven't had the chance to try it yet. I just saw it at Neef, but in all honesty, I am very happy with these wedges. The sea stars are roughly polar lined. I do have to wait for dark to polar line them more precisely. I will try to record that. I will try to be as precise as possible to see if these 60 second shots are actually feasible with the sea star. By the way, there is a gigantic group of sunspots on the sun right now. So of course, I will not be missing that also with the C-Star, with the S50, because the location for my S30 solar filter is a mystery. So I have installed the solar filter. Let's find the sun. By the way, I am in equatorial mode and I've heard people saying that they need to switch from equatorial to altazimuth for the moon and the sun, but it's just simply not true. It works just as well. Or if you're doing a long 
time lapse, it works a lot better actually because you still get field rotation with the sun or the moon if you're doing a time lapse over a long period of time. Let me just show you how you can find the sun during the day if it's not finding it for you. It is really simple. All you have to do is just use the shadow. Right, so this is the shadow of the telescope and if I were perfectly aligned with the sun I should see the tiny little slit between this part of the sea star and this part of the sea star. So I'm just gonna adjust it with the joystick so until I find that. Okay. Once you see this slit here then you know that and one direction is pointing at the sun and then now we have to align the other axis and that's going to be just by moving the altitude axis to where it's the smallest and I will be looking at my screen to see if I see the sun pop up and I expect that I will. Okay so we have it and this group of sunspots is just absolutely enormous and I will be taking a video of course in raw. It's just huge. So I'm taking the video of the sun now and after that it's just a matter of waiting for the dark to see how those long exposures are and then tomorrow when I go home I will be sharing the photos that I took and how it was in general. So I'm going to try to polar line as accurately as possible. And now you can actually choose in which direction you want to do the alignment deviation in, which is super useful if you have an obstructed view of the sky. The wedge does make it possible to do it quite precisely, even if it still takes a little bit of effort. I think maybe like you should allocate three to four minutes if you really want to get down to zero zero for the alignment error which I highly recommend. So I'm back home now and I've downloaded all the images from the Z-Star both from the S30 and the S50 and I've processed them. Let's take a look at the results together. Let's start with the S30. This is the stack straight out of the Sea Star, 448 exposures each, 60 seconds long, of the Cygnus Wall region in the North America Nebula. I used the light pollution filter for this one and I'm quite happy with how it came out for the size of the telescope, even without doing anything super fancy to edit it on the computer. This is my stack and then this is the final image that I have processed on the computer. Honestly, I'm quite happy with how it came out. There's quite a lot of detail and nice tonal variety without having had to resort to any sort of special editing techniques on the computer. And now over to the S50. First of all, here's the sun photo I took. Um, the original was a raw 418 second video and I processed it on the computer afterwards. You can clearly see the huge sunspot group that was what I was interested in but uh, we also see some other regions like there is this smaller sunspot here and then some other small details on the surface. Even with the telescope being so small it seems like it really benefited from the excellent seeing conditions that I had at the location high up in the mountain with good seeing and a calm atmosphere. The next up is the M13, the Hercules globular cluster. Honestly, this was more of a side project while I was waiting for the main target to rise. It's actually an HDR composite made of uh, 17 exposures of 60 seconds, 15 exposures of 20 seconds, and 10 exposures of 10 seconds. I then combined them using HDR composition in PixInsight, followed by a quick color calibration and an auto stretch. Of course, no light pollution filter was used, and this is how it turned out. I think that HDR composition can be a very valuable technique if you're going to start using 60 second shots because you will start burning in some of the regions. And then here we have the elephant's trunk nebula. So I ended up shooting this over multiple nights and I processed all the frames and then stacked them all together afterwards. So one of the nights gave me 151 one minute shots and then the other night I got 105. 60 second shots so that's a total of 256 minutes. I think that it could use more integration time but so what we were trying to test here are two things which are the flats and the 60 second shots. So let's see about those flats. 
There's clearly a benefit to using correctly matched flats, especially when we're working on mosaics. Uh, you will have noticed that the mosaics that came out of the sea step, because the elephant's trunk was already a mosaic before the ones that I showed you, the stitching is seamless. There's no weird gradients or artifacts and the image is just flat as it's supposed to be. It actually makes me wonder if they've been applying some kind of internal flat correction in the past without explicitly mentioning it the same way that they do with the darks. And now they've just given us the option to do it ourselves. I don't know. Um, either way, taking your own flats is absolutely more accurate and it is the correct way to do it. And when it is this easy to do, I really don't see any reason not to do it. Should you be using the 60 second shots? In my opinion, yes. If you are not in the city, in a large urban area, you're outside of those really worst light pollution areas and you're willing to invest those three to four minutes for a precise polar alignment, I think it absolutely makes sense. It makes a huge difference, especially if you are also saving the individual frames because of the amount of files and data that you have to deal with. You will also see benefit in the detection of fainer structures. Please keep in mind though that a precise polar alignment is absolutely necessary. While with the S30 I never experienced any star trailing, I had these very visible trails at 60 seconds with the S50 when I didn't align it accurately enough. The other thing, should you be taking your own flats? Even if you're not seeing any gradients and vignetting issues right now because the C-Star is already doing a very good job at correcting those internally, doing your own flats is the correct way to do it as it gives you full control and theoretically better results, especially for mosaics. So why not do it? It's so simple. Let me know in the comments if you're planning to try either of these options or both of them. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. So I'll see you here in the next video and I wish you clear skies.